Welcome back to Homeschool Together, where the real heroes live. <laughs> this episode was recorded a month and a half ago and then accidentally deleted off of YouTube, but that's okay. Guys, there was like I've, a lot of technology fails. I've got some phlegm in my throat. We're going to do it this again. It's kind of my fault. We're going to try. We got all the books from the library again. <laughs> We've remade it. We had the show notes from that. Round gonna, two. We're going to do yeah. our very, very best to go back to East Africa <laughs> we're going, so that we, we're going back. we can't leave any region dip. behind. We can't, we can't we, leave them behind. When we're done with the whole world, we can't People. be like, oh, there's just one missing. People demand it. Anyway, That's we right. have a lot of books. Let's not waste a lot of time because we, part of the tears was we knew how long that episode was. It was a really long episode because we have a lot of books. Now, of books. first of all, we, we always have a focus for each country or region. And this one we talked all about big animals you know you've got all your lions and giraffes and elephants this is all about the you know the animals. savanna we talked about kilimanjaro and some of the mm -hmm. other you know uh geologic uh and ecological Talk, regions a little bit of the rift valley there as well i was trying yeah. to explain to my kids how like half the half that area is kind of going to fall off or like split off of africa so they were really really in, impressed it was interesting. <laughs> so, so i was i was geeking out on it <laughs> so anyway, let's get to the books let's get to the books so Mama Miti is a series, basically a topic that you're going to get right. over and over again. Um, these are two, I know we, we actually got, I think, three or four books on yeah. this topic. Wonderful Woman, Mama Miti. I and think this one is Wingari's Trees of yeah. Peace. So she was in, was this was this Uganda? Uganda. Yeah, yeah so this is Wing, Wingari Miti. Yes. And, or, no, Wingari uh, Mathai. Yeah. And uh, so each of these books is about... Uh, her planting trees, she would notice this deforestation and she did this huge effort and got all of the women to join her in planting trees. And there's a bunch of books about her. So both Mama Miti and Wigari's Trees of Peace yeah. are really good. There's a couple of others. These two were our favorites. Yeah. Um, um, I believe I believe this one, the a piece, was the simpler one. I liked the artwork in this one. It was almost yeah. like a collage style. The cool thing about this is it was a mixture of a not only environmental uh, regeneration but also cultural regeneration um, with the culture was dying because of the forests were dying a lot of their resources and a lot of their um, their ways of life was entrenched within this these forests and because they were getting deforested they were losing their culture and so by reforesting the areas they were, they were able to reclaim their culture so it was a really cool story about that and it was it was it was an interesting discussion with my daughter about how their way of life was being lost with the trees. And so it was, it was a really cool story. I liked it a lot. So younger learners, older, older learners. learners. I like the art in this one a little better. Yep. Right. I, it was sort of like that Eric Carl style. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to pull out a couple Jane we Goodall have, books. We have three, I we think. Three okay. Here. okay. So we have Little People, Big Dreams, Jane Goodall. There's also this I Can Read, Jane Goodall, Jane Goodall. a and champion am, of chimpanzees. And I am Jane Goodall. So. Jane Goodall. <laughs> right. There's a, it's a big theme in in this area of the world, especially around the uh, the gorillas and chimpanzees. Um, there's a lot of great documentaries. You can see the movie with Sigourney Weaver. Um, no, that that one said that it was a little bit for older kids. So you know, check kids, yeah. that and make sure that it would be okay. We didn't watch it. We didn't watch it. But there's a lot of good topics on here. I like the I am Jane Goodall because I like the round head kind of cartoony style of yeah, it. Yeah, um, this one's pretty good too. Our daughter actually really liked the I can read yeah. version. I think that this one might be the simplest I can read. Or this do was you think? kind of like this is a graphic novel. So if you have a student who kind of gravitates towards graphic novels, mm -hmm. um, that style of, of writing and, and, and display of information, the, this one works really nicely for that. So, so any of these books are good. We wanted to show them because they were all kind of similarly good. Yeah, we so were, I read all three. Pick the, something about Jane Goodall. By the end, my daughter was like, wait a minute, this is not another Jane Goodall book. I'm like, yes, it is another Jane Goodall book. You're going to enjoy this. I think, which one was which one was our daughter's favorite? I, I think it was either this one or this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I agree. This, this one had a little bit more like rote information. The other ones are kind of like playful and fun. Right. All right, Naya's Long Walk. Now, this is part of a theme that we, we ran into um, through East Africa, which is access to water yeah. and, and health. And you'll see this through a couple more books that we'll talk about here, but this is a general concept, uh, idea that kind of woven its way through a lot of these stories. This is a story about a young daughter, uh, uh, two sisters. Um, mm -hmm. uh, older sister was walking to the wa get water at the well. With her younger with sister. With her younger sister, and, she, and her younger sister fell ill, and she had to carry her back. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a really long journey. It's really, really difficult. When she gets home, now her mom has to carry her, her daughter, her, the youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. And even though she, she carried her, her sister home, she had to then walk with her mother to go get help at the clinic. And it was talking about how 
access to water is really access to clean water. clean water and then access to health care is pretty stretched out yeah. in some of these areas and so i was having to explain to my daughter like they they can't just get into their suv yeah. and drive to the you know the walk-in clinic right, right. that's not how it works and so she, it was talking about poverty and, and access to water and, and that stuff so right. really heavy concepts this book was was a little heavy it was kind of sad so if you have a learner who's a little bit sensitive to right. that you may want to you know gauge whether or not you want to but of all the access to water books i think this one was was most suited it was the best one we think and probably the most suited to a slightly younger learner as long as they're okay with you know it it is a real but sad topic um she she lives in the end this girl doesn't die or anything yeah nobody dies nobody (laughs) dies but um i think this one it was the easiest for our daughter to understand Mm -hmm. yep absolutely Absolutely. Um, next one is the walking walking for water. Now, I like this story a lot. Yeah, this it is was, for a slightly older learner. Again, the same idea with water, um, but this one brought in education and kind of gender equality. So basically, the boys were allowed to go to school, and the do- and the sis- uh, their sisters and, and their their siblings had to stay home and do chores, go get water. And wa- and perf- I, didn't they walk all day they for walked, water? They yeah, basically they, spent the whole day going and fetching water, bringing it back, back going and get more boiling water, coming it. back, yeah, boiling it, all that stuff. Meanwhile, the boys got to stay at home. Anyway, so long story short, the boys dis- discovered this issue. Uh, their teacher told them about it, and then they started swapping uh, roles. So they stayed home, and then the sisters got to go to school. And so they began to work together, not only to do the tasks and to get clean water and share share the burden, um, but they also allowed their sisters to go to school and learn and become educated. And so, this is a true story. True story, yeah. Yeah, these, this is one of the citizen kid books, and there's been several that we've done throughout Africa, and mm-hmm. they're really, they're all really good and, and based on true stories. Absolutely. Really good book. I like this one a lot. Yep. Um, took a heavy concept and, and presented it in kind of a nice, nice yeah, light way. Yeah, I agree. Um, bringing the rain to the Kapiti Plain. So this is, it's a classic, it's a reading rainbow. If you can find the reading rainbow version of it, then LeVar, <laughs> then LeVar Burton can read it for you. Um, this well, is, I think they have a lot of that. If you do Google search on YouTube, you, you might, might be able to you find may see it. the old episode. This is based on the house that Jack built. So, you know, you're, you're basically saying the same lines and then the next page you add one more and the next page you add one more line. So you're, there's a lot of repetition. <clears throat> You know, by the end of it, I was like, and then bringing rain to the, you know, Kapiti. <laughs> but my daughter loved it. She thought it was terrific. Um, so, you know, just, just think about it from that perspective. It was all about, again, about water and the animals needing it mm-hmm. and, you know, all the steps and stuff to, to, bring, to bring water. So I think that even though this one is repetitive, that kids really love it, mm-hmm. especially younger learners will really enjoy this because of all the repetition. They'll start That's to like- remember the words and... Yeah, that, that kind of rhyming poetry Yeah, it's thing. really good. It's a classic. Rhino in the House, the true story of Simeon. Now, this is a really cute story about a, uh, a woman who kind of runs a nature preserve, and she mm-hmm. finds a kind of a lost rhino, and she brings her into the home and nurses the rhino to health um, through her adolescence, and begins to allow her to run around the house, and she gets stuck in, the, in, in a doorway as she grows larger. And my, I think the funniest one was when she, like, poked her head in when uh, the woman was taking a bath. Eventually, she gets released back into the... Uh, the preserve and they become friends and they sit at a pond really cute playful fun story talking about how you know preservation of, of the land mm-hmm. um, you know rescuing this is Kenya animals. Kenya yeah this is Kenya focus but rescuing the animals and focusing on wildlife preservation was a big theme in this one and, and told in a very playful and fun way my daughter mm-hmm. was laughing at a lot of the antics of Samia like living in a, it's a giant rhinoceros living in a house it's very funny <laughs> so really cute really cute yep it was really um, next one, one uh, Bonio Bonio um, really great story. I love this story. This is based on a true story from Kenya. Very true story. Dr. Bonio. Um, a young boy um, gets offered the opportunity to go to school, but he has to travel a super far distance and leave his family in order to do it. Crossing rivers and going through the forest and coming upon a clearing and there is the school. Um, really wild, really crazy. And it was kind of juxtaposed against like our normal day. Our daughter saw well, wow, the struggle that he had to have just to get his education was amazing. Mm-hmm. Eventually goes to America. Uh, school, I think, in Texas to go to medical school, opens up a practice in, in um, I think, Cleveland area, and then eventually is very, very successful and comes back to his hometown. And the reason why he wanted to go to be educated was that his sister died and she didn't have access to health care. So he brought a clinic mm-hmm. to his hometown. So it was a really great story. And again, the story is, a, I think, a very famous story. You can find mm-hmm. a lot more information online. Um, and videos as well. So it was, it's a great little touchstone. Yeah. Yep. This Again, a good one. the same theme of health and health care. Right. Um, and that, that moves right in here Mimi's Village. Mimi's Village, how basic health care uh, transformed it. 
So this is another story about access to health care, and she's there, she have to walk to the to the clinic in the next town <coughs> over. Um, her mother is pregnant, and she has some complications with the baby. Again, no one dies in this one. Um, for my memory, no one dies. <laughs> and uh, anyway, the whole thing is that she's wondering, well, how can they build a clinic? for? And so she drums up support for her father and the other men in the town to build them a clinic and then try to raise the money to pay for a nurse to come mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it's about starting their own clinic in their own village and how that changes everything for them. So this is another Citizen Kid book, so based on a true story, really great. Absolutely. Really um, great. The next one, uh, carrying on with the large animal theme, um, mm -hmm. The Elephant Keeper, and this is uh, a book in Zambia. Right, so another Citizen Kid, Zambia. and this is the true story of a boy who worked at a resort and he came upon a baby elephant who was struggling in the pool and he managed to save the baby elephant and they took it to a, uh, a special uh, elephant kind of rehabilitation center. And because the elephant was so young, they thought he would die, but he had a connection with the boy. And so the boy stayed with him and became one of the elephant keepers. And they work with the elephants as they grow and then eventually they release them into the wild. And so it's this whole story. And what I really like about this is that every like four pages or so, there's a two page spread that breaks from the story and is all about facts about elephants. Mm -hmm. So you can stop and you can read all about different things about elephants, then you get back into the story. And it's based again on a true story so my daughter really really enjoyed this actually we both did I think this is this is for me was one of the favorite books we read for East Africa you know mixing that storytelling with the informational I think is a great way to go it is Absolutely. so Amani's Moon so this is another story from Kenya this is a little girl who lives in a village and she's being made fun of uh, because she's very short and she claims that she's gonna reach the moon and so she tries to jump to the moon and then dance to the moon and, and climb trees to the moon and throughout each of these um, ways that she's trying to reach it you're learning a bit more about Kenyan village life and so that's what I think that's what the, where the real magic is and of course it's a very sweet story mm -hmm. um, with her mother uh, and her you know kind of um, with her supporting her dream to reach the moon and it was very sweet and I thought told, told some good stories to some good morals as well about you know like bullying and mm -hmm. teasing uh, another child but in the middle of it you learned a lot about their culture so. yeah Typical theme we see is like kind of like going around the town and learning about the culture. Yeah, the story. yeah, which is really great. All right, the Matatu. So I mean, the Matatu is a bus, and the story takes place around a, a grandfather and a grandson, and they're going on a trip through, um, across, on the bus to a, another town. And along that along that trip, the boy's really really excited. He's never ridden on the bus before. While they're on the bus, the grandfather begins to tell him a long uh, kind of folktale story about why the goats. The dogs and the sheep all act differently um, as they drive by. Some animals run away, some animals stay there, some mm. animals kind of like bay at the, at the bus. And the whole story kind of tells the reason why they act that way. So it's a really cool little folktale song, uh, folktale story, a little bit longer than I thought it would be because it had to tell these two nested stories in, in, in between. But it was really, really fun and really, really enjoyable. I really, I really loved it. Yeah. yeah. And really colorful, cool buses, which is kind of fun. Um, my rows and piles of coins. Um, we talked a little bit about, there's a book I think we read that was in Morocco that had kind of the same art style where it was kind of this rotoscoping. And it is the same it uh, is. illustrator, I believe. Okay, I did so look that up that later. That is good, because I, uh, I wondered, because we're, we're seeing some of the yeah, similar Yeah, it's a really beautiful book. This is a great moral story. I don't know if it's true or not, but basically it's a young boy who worked really, really hard for his mother who sells food at the market, um, and she pays him, and he keeps his money. He's trying to collect his money in order to save up to buy a bike. Um, in the end, he basically saves up enough to buy a bike and he goes to buy a bike, but he didn't realize bikes cost a lot more than he thought they did. Um, then he's all kind of dejected and his father offers to sell him his bike. And because he knows his son worked really, really hard to save up the money, he pays his, his father for the bike. He's overjoyed and his parents give him the money back because they know he's been working very hard. So it's a really great tale. Um, but my daughter really enjoyed the fact that she could work hard, pay for something, and then I have to pay her back for it. <laughs> that was one of, one of the things she took away. Maybe not the thing I wanted her to take away, but, but the idea of working hard. Um, I, I love these type of stories, these kind yeah. of moral tales for young kids. So really great, yeah, great story. I love these. Um, next one, 
For you are a Kenyan child. So this is about a boy who is supposed to look, look after his grandfather's cattle, and that's what his job is for the day. He's a, kind of a shepherd, and so, uh, but he of course shirks his duty, and he goes about the village to visit other people when he should be looking after the cattle. And in this, this is another where he goes around the village, and he's meeting different people, and you're learning about village life and what that's like. Um, and then eventually he remembers he's got to get back to those those cows and he gets in trouble with his grandfather and so it's it's really this is a very sweet story but it also just imparts these small nuggets where our mm -hmm. daughter could really understand like oh that's what it's like that's what their homes look like that's yeah. the the kind of work that they do I mean just all the different aspects of, of village life absolutely. so it was a good one absolutely um, next the fossil hunter so this is Mary Leakey she's a paleontologist she's actually a British paleontologist but she spent most of her career in Tanzania and she found the, some of the oldest human remains. I think Lucy the yeah, skeleton it was found by Mary Leakey. So mo much of this takes place in Tanzania and it was a really good jumping off point if you wanna get into some of the um, paleontological discoveries that happened in Africa um, mm -hmm. about, you know, early um early hominids yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm gonna yeah. use the wrong word hominids uh we haven't done prehistory yet so i'm not all that's, up on it that's coming up that's September. coming up next stay tuned and subscribe to, to the youtube channel <laughs> <laughs> so this was a really good one and a good a good jumping off point if you want to do some documentaries or watch some videos or things about um paleontology in africa absolutely really really great topic. kind of a bottomless topic in a yes. lot of respects um, Mufaro's beautiful daughter. So this tale, and I don't remember what country this is from, so forgive me, but it's kind of Cinderella-ish a little bit. It's basically, a, you know, a tale of two daughters, and one of them is nice, and one of them is not nice. Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe, okay. And um, the the uh, the the obviously the kind daughter, you know, wants the to marry ends up marrying the prince when, instead of the daughter who's mean. It's kind of similar to a Cinderella. It's not exactly the same. And we, we know you're you're not really fan of the. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Cinderella thing. We've been through them over and Cinderella over. Cinderella in general, I think. Yeah. Is this a reading? No, this is a really weird book. But yeah. it's it's got really great artwork. Um, my daughter actually really loved this because she's just really big. She into, loves like, all the Cinderella. She stars. loves all the fairy tale stuff. So the I'm more you hate on Cinderella, the more she loves it. I'm including this as an honorable mention <laughs> because I thought it was just another, you know, the kind person wins the prince type of story. But she loved it, and it wasn't exactly like Cinderella. So there you go. It's not, <laughs> it's not Greece. I'm just, I'm just, I had, she was one of her favorites, so I want to talk about it, but it wasn't one of my favorites. Africa is not a country. Now, we've yep. recommended this book before as kind of a, a light spine to go through Africa, mm -hmm. talking about, you know, er, yeah. every Yeah, Build Your Library yeah. uses it. Build Your Library uses it, recommends and Torchlight, it. I think. And, and Torchlight, this is a great book. It's something you just nibble on as you go through the uh, various countries in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, great little kind of a round robin of knowledge. And right, it's like else. snippets of different people's days in different countries. So when, wherever yeah. we're studying, we read the snippet about what a day, what that part of their day might be like in whatever country. And yeah. so it's really great. We, we mentioned it on our other videos, so we just wanted to cover right. it again in case you didn't watch the other videos. African Critters. Yeah, this is one of the spines <clears throat> listed for Build Your Library. And it's got some great color photos of all these big, the big cats and the giraffes and yeah you know all kinds of stuff just basically leaf Rhinos. through it leaf through it read you know a, a, a small section i think they're like two or three page sections and mm -hmm. you can just nibble on them through the whole week or two and you'll hit a lot of animals and you'll see if there's something that sticks yeah Absolutely. yeah we really liked it i thought it had some beautiful it's national geographic i think yeah so it's no, got, you can't go wrong it's got beautiful go artwork so we'll talk a, a little bit about some of the chapter books we've had this week um lions at lunchtime which is the uh, magic, magic tree, tree house, house book we didn't read this one. I actually let the daughter read it on the audiobook. So she enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know. I don't know what happened in it, but she, she enjoyed it. it she was, loved it. It was one of those things where, you know, you, you, how many chapter books can you read in like a week and a half? Yeah. Um, so I let her do the audio version of this, and then I, I think I found it on YouTube, or you can check it out at your library. Yeah. So absolutely worth reading. Yeah, we use the Libby app with the our Libby library. App, yeah. Libby app. Now, greetings from somewhere. Um, the Mystery of the Lion's Tale. This is a really cool story. I read this to my daughter. Um, again, these are the the two young couple, the two the two children who are homeschooled because their parents kind of travel around the world and write. Because um, his mom has mom. a ridiculously cool and yeah, fictional she's, job. She's paid to go to different countries and write to write stories. for the hometown newspaper. I'm, I'm not. I don't believe this. I'm is jealous. A, I don't believe this is a real <laughs> job, Ariel. I don't think it is. <laughs> I'm calling. I'm calling shenanigans. <laughs> uh, so basically, the the two kids have to go around and they have like a little punch card. You know, you collect five big animals and you get a sixth animal for free or something. <laughs> 
So they have to go and find and see all the big animals, and the one that they're missing is the lion. And the lion's tail is kind of, they keep seeing this lion's tail in the bushes. And so they have to figure out, you know, is it a lion? There's is it always not a some lion? sort of a little mystery. It's always a little mystery. This is very light. They're very playful. They're they're playful. The, Our daughter you, really you loves can them. Read these really fast. You can read them really fast. Our daughter sitting, loves yeah. them. They, I, they're kind of forgettable for me, but she really really loves them, and they've got great pictures. And so, yeah. I mean, I think they're recommended, but not a lot of staying power. Uh, another honorable mention. We didn't read this, but this is the race to the uh, race the wild Savannah showdown. We just didn't get to it, and this is better for a little bit older learner. I'd say maybe like second grade. Yep. This would be chapters a bit better are a little, for. chapters are a little longer. What's really cool is sort of like in the other book that you talked about, where you had kind of the story and then you had some informational. Um, the race to the wild does that here as yeah. well. So in between the chapters, there's like a page or two of information on that like that specific topic that they're pulling out. And these are basically kids doing like an eco competition or expedition, right. and they're just kind of racing around an area. And by doing that, they see animals, they see the wildlife, they meet the people, mm -hmm. and along the way, they're telling you a little bit more information. These books are a little bit longer. I, I like these a little bit more at this yeah. level. Um, this might be better if you have like a first or second grader and you're maybe yeah. reading it at night. Uh, for I think kinder time. first even, this might be second grade and above. Absolutely. So, but we wanted to give you the option. All right. And the Fandex. Not a book, Africa. but... Not a book, So but. this is the Family Fun Fandex. So each of these is about... Uh, this, these are all different countries. Yeah, all the different countries of Africa. So they've got pictures, some facts and figures, and then on the back, there's some information on front and back on about back. the country. So These are really fun for, like, the car. Yeah. You can give them to your learner, and they can look through them. Our daughter would like to pick out a couple of them, yeah. and then we would read. So you can, if, you, know, you can take the group of countries you're studying for that week or two, and then just pick those out and read about them. Those. Yeah, sort of like a, a, a unique spine. Yeah, in, in I find respect. these a lot on Book Outlet, so yep, absolutely. if you're interested in that. So those are the books, a lot of them, and some, yeah. there's a bunch that did there make the a cut. a lot of books. We, we read a lot of books this time, but these are all very, very good. We enjoyed yeah, all of them. All, all so good. let's talk a little bit about some movies. Let's first on the ones we got, Lemurs of Madagascar. Yeah, so this is uh, an IMAX documentary. I like to move it, move no. it. I no, like let me just it. say, we did not watch like Madagascar. Move it! And I'm not saying Madagascar is not a decent choice for especially young kids because it's animated, but we have seen Madagascar so many times. So, we decided to do something different. What about the penguins of Madagascar? Kind of that Africa Antarctica fusion. No, no it's just silly. Um, so, yeah, this is a documentary about lemurs. It's really good, it's got just beautiful footage. Our kids really liked it. And, and then, then the we, other one was the Wild Kratts Madagascar Madness. Right, so Wild Kratts, PBS. Um, wild, 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 and of course, this is again a mix of uh, cartoon and then real, real life documentary type stuff. So mm -hmm. our kids really enjoyed both of these. There's four different um, Wild Kratts episodes on here. So you can find, so let's see, the episodes are... are uh, Lemur Legs, Mini Madagascar, Lemur Stink Fight, and the Fossa Palooza. So anyway, if you end up just finding episodes of it on PBS or something, you can look for those yeah. four episodes, um, or you can get this we out from our library. Yeah, we can check it out at the library. So the last thing that we watched was yeah. African Cats, which is a documentary on Disney+. Plus. Out of everything we watched, I think that that was the best. It, our kids were just glued to it. Yeah. And, and there's it basically breaks up. It tells the story of a lion pride, and then a cheetah mother and her babies. Um, and it tells, I think, a whole year in their mm -hmm. life and what mm -hmm. happens to them. Um, so... It was great. It was totally riveting, and it was very like engrossing. It was such a story of you know who was challenging the pride for leadership and territory yeah. and all this stuff. I would say though there was some sad stuff. There was some death. There wasn't anything gory in it, but there was like the cheetah mother has five babies. Then the hyenas attacked. The next morning she has three babies. <laughs> you know the the old lioness. You know, wanders who off, and wanders <laughs> off into the brush to die, type thing. You know, so there was a little bit of that. So if your kids are really sensitive about animals and things like that, um, our daughter was like, "Wait a minute, she she's going off to die," and I was like, "Well, this is nature, and this is what happens." And she was like, "Okay, okay, I can deal." With it. Okay, okay. She still really liked the documentary, and she recommended it at the end. I said, "Did you enjoy? It? Would you watch it again?" She's like, "Oh yeah, I, I really enjoyed it," but. Just be aware that there are a few sad things that happen, but oh, otherwise it was riveting. I thought it, it was a no, beautifully well filmed documentary. So. Yeah, all the nature documentaries now are just top notch. Oh, just so good. Um, cooking wise, we didn't get into anything this we week. We were so busy. We, yeah, look, if, if we could remember we back, we were trying to remember six back, weeks ago, and I don't think we did anything because we were super busy. We were super busy, and uh, we'll blame. Uh, let's see, soccer. 
and mm. and the weather. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> know. So we hope you've enjoyed East Africa. Part two. Yeah. Or, we hope we two point If you watched this before and you're watching it now, we hope we're we're close to what we said the first time. It, there were seven views <laughs> when we, when somebody fat fingered the delete button. <laughs> I'm never gonna live it down, so guys. Seven, I'm never gonna live it down. Those seven people, they've got a double dip on the East Africa. So, and anyways, we've tried and they're our best. Comparing and contrasting <laughs> in their minds. They're like, man, we've, this one's so much better. We've tried. We've tried to recreate as best we can. Thanks for staying with us, and we apologize that this is coming so late. <laughs>